The number one document of all is the letter from the Birmingham jail. That is the symphony of social justice that he wrote. Uh, one of the main points that, uh, in this letter criticizing him, full page ad signed by a white clergyman from Birmingham, is, is that why, why, why is he so impatient? Uh, uh, well, 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 you, you know, um, the, the, the clergyman was saying, we're, we're work, trying to work out our problems here in Birmingham, and, and uh, we've made some progress, and, and um, why can't you just wait? And this is part of his answer to that part of the ad. Uh, history is a long and tragic story of the fact that privileged groups seldom give up their privileges voluntarily. Individuals may see the moral right and voluntarily give up their unjust posture. But as Reinhold Niebuhr has reminded us, groups are more immoral than individuals. We know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have never yet engaged in a direct action movement that was well-timed according to the timetable of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. For years now, I have heard the word wait. It rings in the ear of every Negro with a piercing familiarity. This wait has almost always meant never. It has been a tranquilizing thalidomide, relieving the emotional stress for a moment, only to give birth to an ill-formed infant of frustration. We must come to see, with the distinguished jurists of yesterday, that justice too long delayed is justice denied. We have waited for more than 340 years for our constitutional and God-given rights. The nations of Asia and Africa are moving with jet-like speed to the goal of political independence. And we still creep at horse and buggy pace toward gaining of a cup of coffee at a lunch counter. I guess it is easy for those who have never felt the stinging darts of segregation to say, wait. But when you have seen vicious mobs lynch your mothers and fathers at will, and drown your sisters and brothers at whim. When you have seen hate-filled policemen curse, kick, brutalize, and even kill your black brothers and sisters with impunity. When you see the vast majority of your 20 million Negro brothers smothering in an airtight cage of poverty in the midst of an affluent society. When you suddenly find your tongue twisted and your speech stammering, as you seek to explain to your six-year-old daughter why she can't go to the public amusement park that has just been advertised on television and see tears welling up in her little eyes when she is told that Fun Town is closed to colored children and see the depressing clouds of inferiority begin to form in her little mental sky and see her begin to distort her little personality by unconsciously developing a bitterness toward white people. When you have to concoct an answer for a five-year-old son asking in agonizing pathos, Daddy, why do white people treat colored people so mean? When you take a cross-country drive and find it necessary to sleep night after night in the uncomfortable corners of your automobile because no motel will accept you, when you are humiliated day in and day out by nagging signs reading white and colored, when your first name becomes nigger and your middle name becomes boy, however old you are, and your last name becomes John, and when your wife and mother are never given the respected title Mrs., when you are harried by day and haunted by night by the fact that you are a Negro, living constantly at tiptoe stance, never quite knowing what to expect next. 
and plagued with inner fears and outer resentments, when you forever are fighting a denigrating sense of nobodiness, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. There comes a time when the cup of endurance runs over and men are no longer willing to be plunged into an abyss of injustice where they experience the blackness of corroding despair. I hope, sir, as you can understand our legitimate and unavoidable impatience and why we can't wait.